the universe that she'll she'll <laughs> hey, she'll it worked last she'll time. Provide. <laughs> she'll provide. So yeah. just uh, I these are you know these are quick and fun and meant to be that way. And for anybody who would like to help me group think these, I love 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 any ideas that you have, and I will give you credit in the book one day. Um, one of my one of my favorites when I'm when I'm quipping and just giving people insights to the direction that I'm going is desperation is transparent and it is not attractive. Right. So if if you're if you're like I'll have a baby before I'm 30 or else, right? You know, it's just it's really tricky when you're on that first date um to to be seen as a candidate for unless that person is also on that that mindset. And when you are desperately looking for a job, it shows. So just just have fun. Just look at the job search like being on a date where you're learning about someone else, where you are there to connect, to make a friend, to get a free lunch, whatever, whatever it is. But just just enjoy it. Don't try too hard to be anything that you are not. The second one, and I think it's super, super, super important, is time travels differently for the one who's in control. And by that, I mean, hey, I'll call you next week, right? <laughs> Dating or job search. And if you've ever seen the movie Swingers, where the guy gets super obsessed and he leaves voicemail message after voicemail message after voicemail message on the old school answering machine, and he's, he's like, maybe you didn't get this message or maybe I'm calling the wrong number or maybe he's making all of these excuses for her. And by the time she gets home and checks the answering machine, it's, it's loaded with psycho babble. So it, it is entirely possible that I said, I will talk to you next week. And three weeks went by in a blink of an eye. And my to-do list has gotten so large and it's gotten outside the screen. Just follow up kind of the same way you did the first week and just say, touching base. It's the end of the month. Looking forward to our next conversation. Don't, don't be so cool. <laughs> being, being, a, being desperate is not attractive. And that kind of what goes back to the owning your own. Awesome. Go ahead. I was going to say that kind of goes back to the owning your own career thing too. Like if you, you know, if someone else is in the driver's seat, but it's been a couple of weeks and you are really interested in that, then follow up. There's not a harm in following up. I mean, don't be the annoying person going over and over again, but one or two follow-ups is not going to kill you. Yes, and I I see we have a couple of chats that have popped up. Let's hit. Let's uh, let's take a look at those. We do. Um, Jackie has said, "Come with your needs versus wants in your future partner." Which that is that is a good one. Pam yeah. Evans, who wrote a book. <laughs> I wish we could take. Pam wrote a book on being married more than once. And she says, vet your partner means vet the company uh, that you are considering before you say yes. Love that. That so, is really true. Curiosity is attractive. And when I get into some of the tips that I have for interviewing, there are a couple of spots where I will suggest using the words, I'm curious. And I also like the words, if you're, if we, we talk about, transferable skills is kind of one of the things we used to talk about in the industry. I really like the word portable skills. That somehow there's just something a little bit more attractive about that. But curiosity, opening with an interest in others is always going to be helpful. Um, and it, it's good on a date too. And then lastly, profile pictures matter. Now, I have not had the opportunity to... Uh, to tinker with Tinder or Match or other fish in the sea or Bumble or all the things that are out there. But the stories that I've heard from my friends who have are sometimes people fib about their height. Sometimes people do not look anything like. Sometimes it is at least a big haircut difference. <laughs> But and, and people are disappointed and people when you don't when your when your profile picture doesn't match what you look like in person, there's a you you 
let me say also, definitely have your profile picture be a complimentary photo. <laughs> if you've got a spectrum of your worst look, worst day, and best look, best day, have a good hair day when you're if you have hair when you do your photo. But don't have it be so distorted that it makes them doubt your authenticity and makes them not trust you. So those are just a few tips. Any other tips that you all would like to add from dating days? Well, while we're waiting and folks are populating the chat, um, the one thing I, you just touched on was authenticity. Um, I think in this very challenging interview climate, I think it's I, everybody, we probably all hear stories about being ghosted, um, which can translate to, to both sides or the professional or that dating world, um, but also being authentic. Um, it's probably very tempting when you see that role that's just perfect for you, except maybe there's those two or three things that you haven't done um, to over embellish, but uh, that's probably not going to end well, but, um, you know, I've heard people say, should I just add it? Even if I, you know, had exposure to it, but I didn't really do this. Um, you know, it's very tempting, but I think you just have to be authentic. And, um, I've also heard a lot of people say that, you know, every company is looking for a unicorn that doesn't exist. Um, or they might be writing a job description for that one perfect person that maybe doesn't exist, but still apply. If you feel like you have the majority of them, um, it is a job description and, you know, they're looking for a fit for skills, but also for cultural fit personality. So those things are important to take into account. I've also seen from a lot of my friends and, and things I've heard that, you know, job descriptions aren't always that accurate either, because my friend told me this story recently about how he was looking for at a job description and he happened to know someone who worked at that company and asked them, oh, is this what the team does? And the person who worked at the company said, I don't know what this job description is because this is not what the team does at all. So you have to be on the lookout for that too. A little bit of a catfisher situation in, in uh, the, the job description market as well. But also to the point, Stacey, that you were saying about even if you don't have all of the skills, like don't, you know, be inauthentic and tell them that you do if you don't. But also don't be afraid that if you don't have every one of the skills on the job description that you can't apply. There's nothing to say that that person or the hiring manager won't hire you just because you don't meet this one checkbox. And I feel like this is a very epidemic in our culture, especially with the imposter syndrome, that people will see a job description and not go for it because there's one thing that doesn't meet their criteria. And so, you know, as we continue to move forward, we need to get out of that mindset of this is 100% the truth. If you are a good match for that company, it cannot hurt having a conversation if you feel like you would do that job well. 100%. Looking back at the at the book Lean in Sheryl Sandberg, she talks about how on a, you know, there are ten things that they're looking for in this person that fits the job, and I, I hesitate to be gender specific, but perhaps a woman might say, "Oh, I only have eight. and a, perhaps a gentleman might say, "Sweet, I got eight. <laughs> That's eighty percent. That's a B, right?" <laughs> <laughs> so we want to make sure that we don't take ourselves out of the running. You don't have to, again, don't, don't mischaracterize yourself, but recognize that your superpowers are your strengths and that's what they're looking for. And Jackie had a good comment in the chat about don't be scared to apply if you only meet 50% of the requirements. Don't lie, but remember skills transfer in more than one way. So true. And David Sandal, thank you for crediting Sid Van Wick with looking for a five-legged sheep. <laughs> I had not heard that one before. That, that is a good one as well. Okay, well, if you come up with more, we would love to hear them. Uh, this is fun, but let's 